Welcome to the Global Roundtable. This series focuses on the future of economic competition. I'm Parag Kanna, joined by a distinguished panel including Dambisa Moyo, Daniel Altman, and Anand Girdhardas. Today we're going to be talking about the political power of youth and social media. Obviously, we're focusing very much on the Middle East, uh, where there's been tremendous amount of upheaval, largely driven by youth, by technology, the Al Jazeera effect, whatever the case may be, across the entire Arab world, but very different in each case. We're sitting and watching bystanders like everyone else, but what, what can you say, what can we say about where this is going to go? I think it's been fascinating to watch both what's happened there and then the, some of the debate about technology that we've had uh, in the West relating to it. There's been a lot of kind of vitriolic commentary saying this, these revolutions are entirely caused by Facebook and Twitter on the one hand, and people who say they have played no role. I think a kind of middle truth is emerging where the inability of people to keep out, governments, to keep out information. Uh, you can't just shut off the TV, you can shut off the internet, but then Google invents a system that you can use voicemail to tweet. The inability of governments to sh totally shut themselves out uh, is likely to become a, a more and more potent Is technology, force. though, going to lead to better policy, better economic policy, to democracy? Technology can be democratizing by itself. And I don't think we should just talk about the teenage and 20-year-old tweeters. We should talk about the 30-year-old and 40-year-old tweeters, too, because they're the ones that lacked the economic opportunities that they thought they deserved based on their skills and education in these regimes. If the new regimes are much more meritocratic, it will be an effect of the fact that these 30 and 40-year-old tweeters were the ones who put them in power. I would argue that a lot of these countries are going to be better off despite the uncertainty that we're facing today, that even as they fumble and stumble through economic reforms, the amount of attention that's going to be on them because of media, because of technology, because youth can go out in the streets is going to be incredibly intense. They're not going to have this long window of opportunity to talk and say the nice nice things about how they plan to reform but then not actually do it. The pressure will be on and technology plays a tremendous role in keeping that pressure on them to reform. That's right, but it, it, the history of this is there's always these very beautiful revolutionary moments, and some of them go very well after that, and some of them don't. What is genuinely novel about this is that North Koreas are probably not going to be possible anymore for anybody besides North Korea. The, the idea of a country that is just totally off the grid, where people in that country have no idea what's happening in any other country, uh, is probably a thing of the past. But, but there's a problem at the opposite extreme, too. If you look at a country like East Timor that came into all this oil wealth and said, we're going to handle it totally transparently, any citizen can check our bank balances, then the citizens start saying, hey, I can see your bank balance. How come I don't have a job yet, right? Because when that information is available, people do want you to act on it immediately. And sometimes those expectations are unrealistic. I think the fundamental point is about economics. Like, if you can get economics right, it's mass those hierarchy of needs. People want to see opportunities. They want jobs. They want food on their table. They want their kids to have a better life than they do. If you can deliver that, you probably won't have the volatility that we've seen in the Middle East. I think Generation Y that is leading these revolutions and using technology really wants accountability first. And if there is democracy that comes with that, that's obviously also a very good thing. But we do agree that the young generation is going to be shaping the future of these societies and most certainly their economies, which is why what's happening uh, with youth and technology is so important for the future of economic competition. Thanks very much for your insights. More on that and other relevant topics at BigThink.com.